Hey everybody, Eric Brown, Mobile Media, Mobile Media back at you. Hey, I want to talk to y'all today about an um, uh, aspect of my life that was, uh, uh, to me, was a turning point in my life. And that was, uh, uh, you know, when I was first introduced to the, uh, the book, The Autobiography of Malcolm X. Um, and I think a lot of folks, man, it's not just me, a lot of young black men, when they read that book, it's almost like they have an epiphany, man. You know, it's kind of like a light bulb comes on, you know. And I, I, I'll tell you the story, but before I get into that, I tell you, when I was in Fort Worth, man, I dealt with racism. You know, you kind of, in the schools and stuff like that, you felt it. But for the most part, as a youngster, you was kind of protected from it, shielded from it. When I left Fort Worth, man, I've seen so much racism, man, it was ridiculous. And a lot of it was in the Air Force. So don't think that, you know, those nice, pretty uniforms and uh, picture-perfect people. There's a lot of racists uh, serving in the military, and I had to work on a lot of that. But... Um, the only thing you could do uh, as, a, as a young black man is, is bond together with other black men. So I ended up, uh, you know, chopping it up and hooking up with other brothers, man, from, from cities like New York and Philadelphia. You know what I'm saying? Partner in San Antonio. You know, another partner from, um, from New Jersey. You know what I'm saying? And so these cats were already, uh, they were already fighting a good fight, so to say. You know, they already knew about the black militancy and, you know, the struggle. I didn't know because it was like, you don't really... We was, we, I was not so exposed to it being down, coming from Fort Worth, you know, Fort Worth's a little, little slow in that respect, obviously, you know what I'm saying? And it, it, it brought to mind the books my dad was reading, the, the, you know, Elvis Cleaver, The Soul on Ice, and I was like, and, and when all this stuff started to, uh, to jail, man, after reading the autobiography of Malcolm X, man, it just, a lot of anger just came up, man, and just confusion, man, and frustration and everything, man, you know? It's almost like you realize you've been bamboozled. And again, I don't go off facts and I don't go off bad data. Do your homework, do your research, and don't be stupid. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So the autobiography of Malcolm X let me know basically what was already going on. It was just a say, it was just like a say, hey, young man, slap upside the head. You know, open your eyes and see. And then don't forget, man, uh, that book was actually uh, within our unit in the Air Force among the black guys. It was passed around, man. You know, a brother, there was a brother, man, an uh, older brother. He was older than us. He wanted to make sure all of us had access to this stuff. You know, he had other other stuff, too, that we could read and, you know, to make sure that, um, you know, he was really trying to make sure we were well armed because he already knew what we were dealing with. But he also knew that we had blinders on a lot of us. And so a lot of us didn't really understand or even care about the things that were going on right in our face. But I'm going to tell you right now, after I read the autobiography of Malcolm X, I changed I became a hell of a fighter, man. I became more, I became, I think that's when I became an advocate, man. And it started with, you know, advocating for myself. You know what I'm saying? You know, I got in, I, I used to get in trouble, man, in the Air Force, not for getting in trouble. I used to get in trouble in the Air Force for, how can I put this? Not being a good black boy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what I got in trouble for, real talk. And I hate to use words like that, man, but I'm just going to be real with you. You know, I, it's crazy, man, because it's, it's not even my nature, man, to, you know, challenge anybody. Anybody that knows me, man, no, I'm, I'm pretty easy going. You know what I'm saying? You know, trust is a big thing for me. But uh, all this mistreatment and stuff, I don't put up with that, man. And so a lot of times I was fighting against the mistreatment, but I would get written up and all this time, type of stuff. But what they were doing to me was nothing compared to what they were doing to some other brothers, man. They were getting kicked out. Send them to jail just for stupid stuff, man. Stuff that the white cats get a slap on the wrist for or they turn a blind eye to. You know what I'm saying? And um, I don't know, man. Reading that book really made me understand that, uh, like the big picture, man. It was one thing to leave Fort Worth and to be exposed to all this stuff. But then to read the autobiography of Malcolm X, what it caught, taught me to do was, you know, uh, plant both my feet firmly in the ground. Because, you know, a storm was brewing, pretty much. And and because I was a young man. And I'd be damned, that storm brewed and it brewed and it brewed and it blew and it blew and it blew. And I'm talking about the storms of racism. I ran across all types of stuff, man. I'll definitely uh, be sharing videos on a lot of it. A lot of things I had to overcome. A lot of fights I was in. Uh, never lost one. <laughs> never lost a fight, man, when it comes to racism. Never. Never lost a fight. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to... Uh, What's right, what's wrong. And I'm not even talking about just for myself. I'm talking about in the defense of other people as well. I've done a lot of that, you know what I'm saying, in the military uh, and outside the military. And I continue to do that. 
And I'll always continue to do that. As long as there's breath in my body and someone needs a hand up, I'm going to reach down and grab that hand, man. You know what I'm saying? Especially if they're being done wrong. If I see you being done wrong, uh, I'm that guy that's going to stand up and, and say something to it. You know, we talk about the Alabama brawl. Well, I would have been that young man swimming across that, that water towards those jokers, man, and start, start, you know, putting paws on people, man. You know, real talk. Um, and I'm not a violent man, but um, I know how to go there if need be. But yeah, the autobiography for Malcolm X, man, was a wake up call. And then when the movie came out, that took it to a whole nother level, man. I never forget me and his brother, man. We're at work, man. And uh, I think we got, this dude was like, he was bold, man. He actually asked the supervisor to let us off work so we can go and watch the movie at the movie theater. And when he, when he said he was going to go in there and ask those jokers, I was like, man, this is wild. But he went in there and told them straight up, man, hey, me, me and Airman Brown, I was Airman Brown, you know, ranking Air Force. We want to go watch the, the new movie coming out X. And we want to leave work early. Man, them jokers say, y'all go have at it. <laughs> we I never forget we went to the theater, man. We came out the theater feeling like, goddamn me. Woof. Feeling like twice the man we were before we went in, man. Just seeing that, man. What Denzel Washington did, man, was uh, very impactful to young men like myself. And so uh, the movie and the book, I think, were wake-up calls for me. I'm not a racist. I don't practice racist ideology. I don't give a shit about racists. I don't, um, man, stay away from me. That's all I got to say, you know, but, uh, yeah, if any of you get a chance, any young man gets a chance out there, man, y'all read that book, Autobiography of Malcolm X. Really read what he was trying to get at and read not just the book, but read his journey, man. Look at the journey that this man took, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't like Malcolm X because they were saying he was spitting vitriol, bad stuff. He was spitting hate, you know what I'm saying? But hell, he was just speaking hate. He wasn't acting on hate. Y'all were acting on hate on us. So, I mean, which is worse? Him calling it out or y'all doing it? Come on, man. Give me a break. Man, one plus one is two. Y'all take care. Eric Bama will meet you. Bye-bye.